Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tank. So today we have a little job down here in the Tangerine Tiger Tank. It is a mess, so we are going to tidy it up. Um, there's quite a lot to do to this tank as well because we have to uh, basically change the filter. It is one of the few tanks in the room that still has its part mini in there, right? So we're going to change that over to air today. The tank also has an awful lot of duckweed in the top, so we're going to remove that as well. We're going to do a 50% water change. This is something I suggest you do every so often. I try and do it in all my tanks at least once a month. Drip the water back in, do your 50% water change, and you'll see a big difference in the shrimp right because the more water that you can change safely, the bigger the shrimp will grow as well, the more they will breed, etc. etc. All the little babies, I have bazillions of babies in all my tanks, they will grow that little bit bigger. You will see, right? So that's what we have in store for today. All right, guys, let's do a before and after because um, I'll show you the difference in the tank. The tank itself is quite nice inside. Quite a bit of algae on the front, a lot of duckweed on the sides. Um, I have done, let me see, when was it? The, this was more than a month ago that I'd lasted my water change in this. Water level isn't so low because I have my tanks covered. You can see here the last of the pot minis in the back. Okay, so the plan, guys, is to take a sponge filter from another tank that isn't being used. We'll add it to this tank here, we'll drop a line, we'll drill a hole into their pipe, we'll clear it in here. We'll reuse the sponges that are in here, we'll uh, put these on top of the, the new body of the new sponge filter that goes in here. You will see what I mean. Alright, and uh, we'll try and get rid of as much duckweed in here as possible before we do our water change because it'll be harder to do uh, once we lower it. And yeah, it will be... Quite a bit nicer, I think. There's lots and lots of tangerine tigers in here. I can see babies and stuff, but um, we need to stop neglecting this tank a little bit. Let's get on with it, I think. Right, guys. Hopefully that is a good spot for you to see. Right, we're going to actually fill this uh, bucket up with a little bit of water. Maybe a few litres, because this is what we're going to put the duckweed into here. Um, we're going to use a comb, a hair comb, ironically for me. Um, we're going to comb the surface of the water here and we're going to remove as much duckweed as possible and the reason we're putting it into this bucket with a little bit of water is because we want to see if there's any shrimp that will be um, clinging on to the duckweed right because it always happens so let's get started let's get our water in here a few litres is all we need because uh, this water is more or less just to rinse the duckweed off of the comb right Like so, but I'll show you me doing this as well because uh, I know you guys like to watch this stuff. That part mini is, I think it's on full, right? So we're going to switch it to low right now, or it was on low already. Here we have our comb. You see, I use this quite a bit for this kind of stuff, and it's very easy, guys, to remove duckweed with a comb. I did a video on this a long time ago. Right, let me pick you up to show you. All you do is go from the back to the front, like this, and you're going to scoop out a giant layer of duckweed. You see it? Giant layer. In one go, isn't that fantastic? Right, it will go into this bucket, and as simple as doing that, and it's off. There's your duckweed out. Do it again, from the back to the front, like you're combing my hair. Like so, this removes lots and lots of duckweed all at once. Little shrimp can be caught doing this, right? So this is why I always put in a bucket first because it gives you a chance once that duckweed settles, you'll be able to look in down the sides to see if there's any shrimp. Let's get the rest of this out here. Now you saw how much duckweed was in here and we've almost cleared it in three scoops. Almost. Isn't that just fantastic, right? So you're never going to get all of the duckweed. But you'll get the majority of it. That's what we want. Last few bits at the back. Let me see, let's see if we can side comb this. To the front, side comb I said, yes. We're side combing my bald head. Uh, we're herding it guys, we're herding it into the corner. 
like so. And you can see the shrimp underneath, you see them? I have some red root floater there as well, which uh, once we've tidied this up a little bit, we'll uh, put back into the tank, right? So already that's much, much better. Look at the visibility. Looking good, right? So that glass is quite dirty. What I like to do, guys, as well, is I like to drop the water a little bit and then clean the front of the glass. So that's what we'll do next. All right, guys. We're going to kill a couple of birds with uh, one stone here. We're going to do our water change at the same time. If we can do it without knocking the camera over. And normally, guys, I uh, I actually do this into a floor drain, not into the bucket area. I've decided it's just so much easier for me to do uh, these water changes into the floor drain with a longer pipe. I do this with all my tanks now. All right, guys, while this is draining, we're going to use a magic eraser. This is just, uh, I don't know what this is actually made from, some kind of polystyrene type stuff. Right, we're going to give the front of the tank a little wash, a little clean. Let me see if I can get it so you can actually see a little bit better because this stuff is quite good, right? So uh, you can see all the algae and stuff in here. Watch. See it? It comes off very, very easy. Right, so that was spot algae, green spot algae. Give it a good scrub. And it's actually all off, look at that, already. Right, and I like to do the whole front panel, make sure it's nice and clean. I do more or less the whole front panel, guys, because uh, I have a YouTube channel. And it's quite important for me when I do streaming and stuff that the glass on the front of the tank is quite clean. Right, so these little erasers do an awesome job. They magically clean all of the algae off the front right so in this corner for example you can see you can see the difference in color with my finger watch here see it it's all coming off already next guys we're going to remove the pot mini um i have split the water that went into one bucket into two because we're going to use one for cleaning the sponges and we're going to put the whole pot mini um into here the entire thing with all the material and whatnot because uh, sometimes guys when you have filters like this there can be shrimp stuck inside them so it's a good idea for uh, you to put your filter with all this material in another bucket open up and then see if anything comes out right so that's what we're going to do today let's get this pot mini out of here <gasps> see can i pull that off Sometimes they come up quite easily. There you go. Let's get you out of the way. You've served me well, Mr. Pat Mini. Uh, yeah, let's put you in here. I have unplugged it. The plug is uh, it's not stuck. Good. So there you go. There's one part and the plug was in the water. I'll make sure I dry that out thoroughly before I use it. Guys, let's grab the body of this thing. Gonna grab the sponges first, we're gonna put them in here because uh, we're gonna reuse these. These will go on the body of the new air sponge filter thing. I think you'll see that in a second. It's in another tank, it was being used somewhere else, right? But we're gonna make sure that the, the bacteria and stuff is still. Uh, on these filters here so we could just reuse the sponges there's nothing wrong with the sponges we're just changing the way that the the way that the tank is uh, filtered right so let's get this out here you'll see what i mean with this stuff in a second i don't think there will be any shrimp in here but guys you know what it's like i'm just making sure i drain the thing like so uh, tip it so don't lose so much water and into here it goes Right, and I'm going to tip this out in here. Right, and any shrimp that's stuck in there, guys, because you never know, there might be shrimp stuck in there. Once it all settles, I'll be able to see them, and we'll be able to save them. Let's save this a little bit. So once the time it's in the filter, scrape it with the thumbnail. Waste not, want not. Uh, one of the other things that we could probably do here is 
that back wall is very very dirty you can see it's covered in algae um, your new filter going in here might not stick to it very well let's have a little look in here first give this a dunk that's what I suggest you do because shrimp do stick to things guys make sure you give it a dunk and if you're happy I'm quite happy that there's no shrimp in here I can't see any little babies nothing like that they're quite visible in a little a white bucket like this is just give the sponges a clean oh my god these ones are quite dirty but this is a soil in this tank as well you see it i have a mix of uh, two different things in here because i found that both work for this type of species you can have soil and gravel i have some uh, even bits of crushed coral and stuff in this tank so we'll make sure this is very very clean or as clean as it can be for a shrimp tank like so, back into the tank, Plop. this one as well, this one is worse, you can always tell with the sponge filter guys because the the, uh, the the sponge becomes very firm near the middle, that's what it's like with these two, right? so this was needing done for quite a while, bad mark, okay, so I'm actually getting through all of my tanks uh, getting rid of all the duckweed and whatnot. I did this one yesterday. This one's got a lot of shrimp in it. Let me move it just a little bit so you can see. It has lots and lots of uh, German spotted head pintos in here. There's like a couple of hundred babies. You could probably just make them out all over the bottom of the gravel. So let's get through them. I'm quite happy that this is washed. I probably will never, never show you this. I'll just cut it. There you go, sponge is okay. Back into the tank. Plop. There you go. Let's get rid of this stuff and then we'll get on to the second part, which will be uh, cleaning that bark there to make sure that the new sponge, bubble sponge filter, sticks to that glass quite nicely. And we'll drill a hole. We'll do all the, this stuff. You know what I'm talking about. Let's go. All right, guys, before we go to the next part, I think I'm going to throw in all these little tips that really aren't good enough tips for videos, but they make a lot of sense in a shrimp room, and this is one of them. Right, I've just emptied out this bucket, right? And the inside is still wet. Right, if you have, like I do, I have floor towels and whatnot. Pick up one of your floor towels. Right, my floor towels are towels that I've used in the shrimp tanks for drying my arms and stuff. And after maybe one or two weeks, I put them in the ground and I use them to clean and dry my tiled floor. And on the inside of your bucket, just give it a dry. Right, and I know this might sound stupid but doing this one thing can save you so much hassle the next time you go and pick up your bucket because it won't be stuck together trust me guys this is worth doing all right shrimp fam let's get rid of this uh, nasty algae build up at the back you can probably just see it. it's going to be very very hard for me to film this but i'll give it a go all we want to do is remove as much algae from the center because this is where the the sponge suckers will go into. Right, let's go into the water a little bit because uh, this is where the bottom sucker will go as well. Guys, you can use metal scrapers, whatever, to do this. I just find this the absolute best way of doing it is one of these things. Let me see, can you see the difference? Can you see the difference? Let me just clean up this edge here because I probably won't be back over here for a while Let's clean up the edges make it look a little bit nicer all that dust dead duckweed you can see that see on this side as well may as well do it when we're here yeah all the way along look at that yeah so this is like a once a year kind of thing you would do the top of the tank like that right but it makes a little bit difference Let's get this filter and line in here right now. Right guys, this is our filter that's going to go back in here. You can see the design. It has the chambers in the bottom for some medium to be put into it. I didn't bore you with me uh, drilling the holes for new air pipes and stuff because uh, I thought it would be better if I just put it in. Um, one of the things that might be an issue is I noticed the sucker is missing. I couldn't find another tank. But it has one sucker and this is weighted as well, right? So I don't think it will move 
much. <laughs> Let's see. I think once it fills up with water and we get it stuck to the back, it will be fine, right? So let's see, can I pull this to the front? Let me see you guys, be there for a second. Pull this to the front and connect it. If I can, it will be much easier. Here is our new air connector, we're gonna go down to a bit. Two thirds of the way down. That works a treat. Two thirds, maybe just over a quarter, but that's quite a bit wrong. And then we're gonna fill this tank up again with water. We'll probably try and get rid of some more of this uh, duckweed. And guys, the sponges that are in here, the reason I didn't change them over is because the sponges on that filter have, um, they don't have holes in them, and this has holes all the way through. They're slightly smaller as well, right? So what we'll do with these sponges is we'll put them into the back, just next to the filter itself like this and that will be fine, trust me that will be fine. Once we're filling this back up with water as well, we'll add some seeking stability. All right guys, we are getting there I think. Uh, all we need to do now is actually do the water change, right? So half the water's already out the tank. Uh, bear in mind when you do bigger water changes like this guys as well, that it can take all day to fill tanks, right? So um, don't plan to go out and do something else because that is like the, the biggest mistake you can make in a shrimp room is Doing a water change and then forgetting about it could lead to disaster. Um, I do use auto top up things on my water change, which I'll show you in a second, right? But guys, they can also fail, right? So it's better for you to plan to do your water changes when you're actually in the room or in the house, right? So, um, as I said, this type of water change can take all day because it's, it's much, much bigger. It's better that you do it slow, just bear that in mind. It's always better to drip your water back in. But guys, let's get on with the water change. Up here is my water up here it's been sat in that little container for easily 24 hours i uh the way i do it guys is i do a water change 50 percent water change for example in this tank once the water's out i let it fill up itself automatically you guys have seen my water change system before but just let's go over it for anyone that hasn't that is new to my channel this is my ron water here and at the top here you can see the float valve you can probably just see it's on this is actually switched off right now because uh, both tanks are full i don't like leaving stuff on if uh, the tanks are already full because i think you could pro there's always a slight chance of getting like a pressure leak or something so it's always better for me to turn it off at the source over here when it's not on use guys uh solid b mineral gh we're using this time because um, this is b shrimp parameters um, I go to a TDS of roughly about 130. Um, if you use Siemens as an example, Micro Siemens it is like 260 something. And guys, the way I like to do this as well, you probably not seen this, is the airlines that I have coming down here that go into the tank to circulate the water. Uh, once my water goes in, once it fills up itself, um, it sits in here, I add my salt directly into the tank. Right, and this uh, stream of air helps to mix it. I normally have it on much more than this, so I normally have it on full throw. You see, it, so it's a lot of mixing. Right, so once we're done with our mixing, this tank isn't ready, it doesn't have any salt in it. This is the tank we're going to use today. Uh, the air line that is here, you can see going in, you can see it's bubbling away. Right, what I'll do is I'll come over here, I'll switch it off, just lift the air valve. You can see it, lift the valve above it because this has a little connector and just simply unplug it like so you see it right so now we have a way to take our water out of our tank you see it you see how this is working over here this is where we're going to connect it i have a piece of silicon tubing that i can run to any tank in the room that will be fitted onto that pipe here let's do it right now You guys can't see because I can't possibly do it with one hand. There you go, or something like this, right? And it goes to anywhere in the room. I have it in this bucket just for the convenience. And it goes to my float valves. Like this, right? I have mine connected to a splitter because I like to do normally a couple of tanks at a time, but today it's just one because I think that is the last uh, B shrimp tank I have to do in the room for this week. We lift up our 
four valves. See, I have two here, right? We're going to make sure one is closed because we don't want it leaking water as we fill it up. You can see the other one, look, you see what I mean? It's already starting to fill. So one is already closed, we go back in. We're going to close this one. And you can see the way I do things, guys, where I have and my pipes in this container on the ground and I connect it first by the time that we open that valve if there's any water that's left in this pipe once we lift it and take it over to the tank nine times out of ten the siphon will start itself right if it doesn't start itself we need to break the connection here before it goes into the T or at the valve itself and you have to manually start the siphon yourself with your own mouth right, so where is this valve this is the one now let's get you onto the tank, like so, make sure it's on tight, right and guys as I said two or three drips a second is all you need, so we leave it tight, but that is probably good enough for this tank, two or three drips a second or a fast stream is okay right? but this is what you don't want you don't want it like this but it just pour straight into the tank right? you have all day take your time this valve is a little bit stiff even that is fine right? it will take all day to fill up mind you but that is fine this is what we're looking for there is absolutely no rush while we're here guys right we're going to add our little concoction of stuff i'm going to add my co2 we're going to add my fur and we're going to add some stability as well. You're seeing all the tricks today. CO2, right? This helps with plant growth. It also can help with um, uh, what do you call it? suppressing algae, like string algae. Because if your plants are growing well, guys, the string algae won't grow as well. You can see in this tank, we didn't remove any algae at all from this tank, just from the front. Little dose of fur, one mil. Her water change is all I do. This is, let me see, Easy Life Profitel. This one, this is one I use here. And I also use the Easy Life uh, Carbo. Easy Carbo, just happens to be called. And I uh, just let it drip in. Now one of the other things I don't always do, but it's probably better if you do, is I add, I like to add stability back into the tank. 1 mil again per water change. It's actually probably 1.5 mil for that. I know it's a little bit bigger. But you can buy all this kind of stuff on uh, Amazon. Right, and then your job basically now is to leave the tank alone on the inside. This will do its own thing. Uh, guys, things that are important now is you want to change your dates on your uh, tank when you did your water change it is the 14th today so it's actually a month since I did a water change in this tank right so it's, this is why I'm doing a bigger water change as well one month best way to get these this uh, marking off here this is a let me see it's an edding an edding I can't remember the number edding 750 edding 750 paint marker these these paint markers are awesome for tanks much much better than trying to use permanent markers and stuff right so just bear in mind guys right i'm using a camera if i wasn't using a camera i'd put a rag underneath here just to stop the paint dust going all over the place so you give it a wee scrape get this off comes off really easy easy ish Right, all these uh, little bits like this, if it doesn't come off this time, it will come off the next time. That's just paint that is, that is still a little bit damp underneath the uh, harder outer layer, that's all this is. Guys, as well, you see this mark here? This is a permanent marker mark on how I used to do my water changes before this. I think it was marked for 5 litres. Remember our magic marker thing that we used before? Just give it a rub. He pressed though it's gone. Right, so if you have any marks in your tank that you no longer need in your tank, right, so I think I will keep, uh, let's see, which one? I think this, this one here is a 50, 
100% mark proof so I don't need the one above it. And there you go, it's actually gone. But any marks that you don't need. Let's see, let me get a close up here. So there's the 50% mark. This is the old one. I think this was 25% or something like that. And it's gone, look at that. Easy peasy, let's see if there any more. Any more marks? The mark here, that's a 50% one, there's two marks above it, let's get rid of them. Get rid of them, it's addictive, moving all these marks. And a couple in this tank. Right, once uh, you use it for this kind of purpose, so... I wouldn't use this again in the tank just because it's had permanent marker on it. But, but I have a lot of these. When you buy these, you can buy them in packs of eight. Let's do more. You see it? It's gone. Right, so that is how I like to remove all my markings in the tank. Just make sure this area here is dry again. Uh, before you put your paint marker back on, because it makes it a little bit easier. Edding 750 paint marker. Let's go. So it will be the 14th of the 5th. 14th of the 5th. My well, rate isn't the best, but I can read my own rain. So there you go. There's a 50% water change for this tank. Guys, and I hope that has been of some help. Um, once this tank is settled and filled up, I might leave it a day actually. Uh, we'll see the difference because I want you guys to see a before and after All right guys, it has been approximately what six hours since we were last in this room That's how long it took for this tank to fill up. I must say The sponge filter in here with those bubbles is uh, very very nice. It's much much better than any bubbler I have in the room The tank itself is looking really really fine. Lots of lovely Sawasa tank front Looks awful this bit here, but it is what it is. We are shrimp breeders. I don't really care what the tank looks like as long as we can breed tons of shrimp. So you probably will agree that this looks much, much better than it was, guys. You know, I think so. So doing this procedure that we do, even if it's just once a month, where you go over the tank, give a good clean. I can see some duckweed in the far corner here that I missed. And make sure that there's like uh, no string algae. Clean your covers on your lids, make sure the tank is nice and clean and uh, you'll start to get shrimp breathing a lot. Proof is in the pudding as they say right, so I'll take some macro footage so you can see that these girls in here are buried as well. Let's have a little look at the tank next door because it's doing fantastic. I'll put up some macro footage so you can see these guys too. Uh, they've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of babies. The tank itself is algae free. This tank used to be filled with algae, now it's algae free, string algae free we should say. Um, I still like the green um, and the glass, the biofilm and stuff. But the tank itself is looking much much tidier. You know I really look at all this moss on the side. 50% water change once a month. Get rid of all the algae. Let's have a look along this side. This tank got the same thing probably a few days ago as well. And it's looking really really good too. Do it much cleaner again we'll get some marker footage up here so you guys can see just how good my uh, panda tank colony is coming along because uh, you would have seen a video of this what maybe two or three weeks ago where we did our first call in this tank this is what it looks like now look at all those lovely pandas guys if you've enjoyed today's show and you want to see more like this then please do subscribe give me a big big thumbs up and guys i'll see you in the next one happy shrimp keeping Ooh.